Hi guys, welcome back. Today we will be having fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is the use of government action to influence a nation's economy. Fiscal policy is being attained through the use of government spending and taxation. Remember that government spending is an injection to the economy, while taxation is a leakage from the economy. This government spending and taxation levels will have an impact on economic factors like GDP, employment, and price levels. It is important, however, to distinguish the role of government under the Classical Framework and the Keynesian Framework. Under the Classical view, government revenue should be equal to government expenditure in a specific period. We call this the balance budget. But in a Keynesian view, however, it is necessary to tweak government revenue and government expenditure. If government revenue is greater than expenditure, we have a surplus. If government revenue is less than government expenditure, we have a deficit. In other words, under the classical view, the role of the government is to be passive when it comes to dealing with the economy. But under the Keynesian view, it is the duty of the government to intervene in case that the economy is not functioning well. Let us review the impact of changes in aggregate demand. Remember, aggregate demand here is the downward sloping line. If aggregate demand increases or it shifts to the right, both price levels and GDP goes up. While if the aggregate demand decreases or shifts to the left, both price level and GDP goes down. It is also important to review the business cycle. Remember that the business cycle is fluctuations in the economic activity. The peaks are periods of prosperity where demand pull inflation will be an issue. And the throws are periods of depression where economic activity is depressed. If we're going to put the trend line, the general direction of the economy is upward. However, we see that this is not a smooth increase. To minimize these fluctuations, Keynesian economics believe that governments should intervene through spending and taxation. That is, if periods of depression happen, we want to boost the economy, and in periods of inflation, we want to reduce economic activity. The fiscal policy tools are as follows. To stimulate the demand for goods, an expansionary fiscal policy is necessary. That can be accomplished through increased government spending or decreased taxes. If we want to stop demand pool inflation, a contractionary fiscal policy would be prescribed. That is, decrease government spending and increase taxes. In order to appreciate fiscal policy, let us apply this to the following case. Given an economy's marginal propensity to consume of 0.75 and the real GDP being 200 million, if the potential GDP is 260 million, how much increase in government spending or decrease in taxes is necessary? We are going to start by calculating the multiplier. Given that the marginal propensity to consume is 0.75, the multiplier is 1 divided by 1 minus MPC. 
that's 1 over 1 minus 0 0.75, that would give you a multiplier of 4 times. So for an initial change in spending of 1, the overall economy would change by 4, given the multiplier effect. As a result, the necessary increase in government spending is the necessary increase of 60 million, calculated as 260 minus 200 million divided by the multiplier of 4. Hence, the increase in government spending is 15 million. Or, the taxes should decrease by the following calculation. 260 million minus 200 million, which is an increase of 60 million. But instead of dividing this by 4, we're going to divide this by 4 times 0 0.75. This will give us 20 million. The way we calculate the necessary decrease in taxes reflects the fact that, unlike government spending, where the government can dictate that this is the amount to be spent, in the decrease in taxes, the consumers and producers will not necessarily increase their spending by the same amount as the reduction in taxes. As the marginal propensity to consume suggests, only 0.75 of an increase in income would translate to additional spending. As such, we have the difference in calculation. This would give us a necessary decrease of 20 million as calculated. So in summary, there should be a 15 million increase in government spending or a 20 million decrease in taxes or a combination of the two. We can appreciate this through the following illustrations. For the increase in government spending by 15 million, so note that the real GDP is at 200 million initially. An increase of 15 million would lead it to 215 million. But because of the multiplier effect, it would become 260 million. That's 15 million times 4. Or, if the government will instead decrease taxes, it should do so by 20 million. Thus, from 200 million, an initial decrease in taxes by 20 million would mean more spending on the side of the private sector, leading to a 260 million real GDP eventually. Now, let us do another scenario where we are experiencing demand pull inflation. Given an economy's marginal propensity to consume of 0.75 and the real GDP being 400 million, if the potential GDP is 280 million, how much? One the decrease in government spending, or two, increase in taxes is necessary. Take note when the real GDP is way above the full employment GDP or potential GDP, this actually translates to inflation rather than a real increase in productive capacity. So we want to contract the economy. The multiplier effect is calculated in the same way. That would give us 4 times. This time, for the decrease in government spending needed, we are going to take the necessary decrease of GDP in the economy. That's 280 million minus 400 million. And because the multiplier is 4, divide it by 4. We would have 30 million. The initial decrease in government spending. Or, there should be increase in taxes. That is calculated as 280 million minus 400 million divided by 4 times 0.75, leading to the necessary increase in taxes of 40 million. In summary, the government has to decrease spending by 30 million 
or increase taxes by 40 million. So again, the concern in a contractionary fiscal policy is the prevention of inflation. As such, if we want to stop this increase in price level, there should be decrease in government spending. Initially, the price level is as follows. Then you would see by decreasing government spending by 30 million, leading to 370 million, this would further contract to 280 million as a result of the multiplier effect. Or, instead of decreasing the government spending, what can be done is to increase taxes by 40 million. That would mean from 400 million, we have 60 million then it would move further to 280 million as a result again of the multiplier impact. Now, does fiscal policy work? The answer is not really that conclusive because there are a lot of limitations in fiscal policy. One, we have the timing problem. There are actually three logs in the timing. The first log is the recognition log. The recognition log basically means that there's a timing difference between an economic event before it will be known. Is there inflation? It will, be, it will take time for us to know it. Is there a recession? It will take time for us to know it. Then we have the administrative log. This is the delay in the government bureaucracy. It will take time for a problem to be solved by Malacanang and Congress. Then third, we have the operational log, which means for the fiscal policy action to work, it will take time. Because of these three delays, there is a timing problem in fiscal policy. Second, political considerations should also be taken into account. This is especially true if the candidates can run for re-election. They would influence the economy in such a way that would make them win again. Next, we have future reversals. If there would be a, say, decrease in taxes, we will not necessarily increase our spending. Why? Because we might view this as something temporary. And because of that, we are not going to do the action that is intended by government. Then we also have the crowding effect. The crowding effect simply means that when government spends, it usually borrows. And by borrowing, the cost of funds increase for private businesses. As a result, the government increases spending at the expense of decreasing spending by the private sector, canceling out the fiscal policy. Then finally, there are actually built-in stabilizers which act automatically without the need for fiscal policy. For example, we have the progressive income taxes wherein everyone is becoming wealthy, the tax tables will automatically tax more rather than the need for additional policies to be set by government. So that would be all for fiscal policy. Like, share, and subscribe.